In this segment of the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio, we speak with Stephen Stairs, President and CEO of Benton Resources, trading as BEX on the TSX Venture Exchange and BNTRF on the OTC. Following a project generation business model, Benton has a highly prospective multi-mineral property portfolio. In addition, it holds large equity positions in other mining companies that are advancing high quality assets and whenever possible, BEX retains net Net smelter return royalties with potential long-term cash flow. The company is currently focused on advancing its high-grade copper gold Great Burnt project in central Newfoundland, which has a mineral resource estimate of 442,000 tons at 2.50% copper indicated and 829,000 tons at 2.11% copper inferred. The project has an excellent geological setting covering 25 kilometers of strike and boasts six known copper gold silver zones over 15 kilometers that are all open for expansion. Further potential for discovery is excellent given the extensive number of untested geophysical targets and copper gold soil anomalies. Stephen Stairs is a successful business entrepreneur with 32 years of experience in mineral exploration. Steve's career spans from 1988 where he spent seven years with Naranda Exploration on such projects as the Hemlo Gold Mines, Eagle River Gold Deposit, and the Gecko and Matabi Base Metal Camps. The next 10 years of Steve's career were spent managing the operations of Stairs Contracting Corporation, a successful mineral exploration services company in Thunder Bay, Ontario. In 2004, Stephen and his brother Michael started Benton Resources, where he remains as president and CEO. Since that time, he has been directly involved in the startup of many publicly traded companies on the TSX Venture Exchange, with the most recent being Clean Air Metals, where he secured two high-quality copper, nickel, platinum, palladium deposits and assembled a team of professionals to take the company public. Steve, welcome back to the program. It's great Great to visit with you today. Yeah, thanks, Ellis. Great to be on again. Tell us about this massive sulfide at the Great Burn main zone. What does this mean for Benton Resources? Generally, this is a infill hole. So again, building confidence in the main zone of very high grade with good thicknesses. And uh, that particular hole was targeted so that we could continue it on eastward towards what we believe is a footwall zone. It's basically a second zone that runs 150 meters parallel west of the deposit. Historically, there's a couple of drill holes over in that area where there's really good gold and copper mineralization, up to 9% copper and five and a half grams gold over half meter and other sections that are one, 2% copper over one and two meters in that same area. When we conducted our last geophysical program, Alan King, our geophysicist, identified a nice strong conductor in that region. So that was the target. So we hit the horizon. So when you hit the main deposit, it's hosted within a very silicious blue mafic volcanic. We don't know what the blueness is, but it's some sort of alteration. And we hit that same zone 150 meters over. So we know that there's definitely a parallel zone. We're just not sure how it's all connected yet. We didn't identify the conductor yet. We did hit sulfides, which which tells us we are very close. We have to do a little bit more work now to target the massive sulfides in that horizon. We're coming into the end of the year. 2025 is straight ahead of us. How does this pretend for Benton Resources for the next year? We've shut down just for Christmas break. We'll start back up again in January. Yesterday, we announced a million dollar charity flow through that will add to our uh, couple hundred thousand flow through we currently have in the bank. So we're well positioned with cash to continue on into, say, March, April. We'll continue drilling. So we're going to try to drill some deep conductors that we have from our last geophysical survey, bring the deposit down to approximately 1,000 meters down plunge, and also continue to target this new parallel zone, which we believe could add tremendous value to the main deposit. And then, of course, outside of that, we have regional exploration that we have to complete over 25 kilometers, including more infill drilling up at our copper gold zone in the South Crown region. And just not the last news release, but the one before that, we actually announced a new massive sulfide horizon that we've identified down in the area of the end zone. And that's a new horizon, approximately 200 meters to the west of the known mineralization where previous old drill holes were trying to locate high grade boulders of copper. So we may have identified that horizon now. It will need some substantial drilling in that area to confirm. 
I've taken a look at some of the core samples on the news release and on your website, and you can see all the copper running through it. I think that's very strong where your company's positioned to do very well in 2025, 2026, 27 with the grade of copper that you have. Unless you've got significant grade, you really don't have a story. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Grade is always king. Every time uh, any company gets that real high grade stuff, you get attention in the market. I suspect this stuff will run equally as high as other holes that we put out to like the 25 meters of five to seven percent. I would suspect that we should get around those type of grades. I think we're at the beginning of the golden age of North America right now. We've got to get through a few more things, but with a hundred billion dollar investment from a Japanese firm, I see the need for copper really skyrocketing during the rest of this decade. Yeah, there's no question. We are coming into technical breakthroughs in all kinds of automobiles and technologies for even household running on greener energies and so forth. And just about every one of those technologies are going to use substantial amounts of copper. So there's no doubt that copper is going to be the main element that every mining company is going to want to be looking at and picking up, especially when you got grade. You can mine a small deposit when it's high grade, but you can't mine a small deposit at low grade. There's just no economic to it. I think when our listeners take a look at your stock chart and your symbol BEX on the TSX Venture Exchange and your symbol in the US BNTRF, what you're going to see is a stock basically at around seven cents Canadian and five cents US. And that is an infinitesimally small number. And I see nothing but potential upside and potential opportunity before the market really heats up. Yes, absolutely, Ellis. We are tremendously undervalued. We know that we're not alone. There's a lot of great junior companies out there with big assets that are just completely undervalued. I believe that is about to change as we roll into 2025 and the market comes back to life and we start to see it come back to the junior mining sector. Most of the big companies are making record profits, but yet their, their EBITDAs are still low compared to other sectors. I think we got nowhere to go, but up. Steve, it's always great to catch up with you. I really appreciate your chatting with me today, and I wish you a fantastic holiday season in 2025. Yeah, you too, Ellis, and I think 2025 is going to be great for all of us, and I'm sure we'll be doing lots of these, these little updates and so forth for our shareholders as we move along. I've been speaking with Stephen Stairs, President and CEO of Benton Resources, trading as BEX on the TSX Venture Exchange and BNTRF on the OT. Find the company at bentonresources.ca. For Money Talk Radio and the Ellis Martin Report, I'm Ellis Martin. Would you like to be one of the first to see who we are following? Subscribe to our audio newsletter. It's free. ellismartinreport.com.